Hello and welcome to my shop. This is the first in a series of videos on the bottom feeder bowl gouge. My aim with this series is to not try to convince anyone to rush out and buy a new tool, but to just shed light on a tool for wood turners wondering if they need one. As you may know, a bottom feeder bowl gouge is one whose short bevel allows its handle to clear the rim of a steeped wall bowl while clearing the bottom. As demonstrated by this computer rendering, the handle of a long nose gouge tends to hit the rim while attempting to clear the bottom. The short bevel of a bottom feeder puts the handle at a more perpendicular angle to the surface being cut, letting it clear the rim. I'll note that a lot of the bowls I turn don't even require a bottom feeder bowl gouge. My longer nose gouges can clear the entire bottom in one stroke. And you can also just use a scraper to remove wood from the bottom of a bowl. But the other big advantage I found to the shape of this bevel is the quality of the cut they deliver across the bottom. If we realize that the bottom of a bowl has the same grain orientation as a normal board, we can compare the bevel angels, bevel angels of gouges with bench planes from flat woodworking. The bottom feeder, with its higher angle of attack, is akin to, say, a number four bench plane. A long nose gouge with its uh, narrow angle of attack is akin to a low angle block plane. If we're planing a, a straight grain piece of wood, number four is going to deliver a wonderful cut, whereas if we take the low angle block to that same board, we'll probably get some tear out, and that's because the low, the low blade as this, with this uh, low angle of attack tends to pick out the fibers, um, thus tearing them, tearing them out. The same goes for the two bowl gouges we're comparing. The long nose gouge tends to pick out the fibers from the bottom of the bowl, whereas the bottom feeder acts more like a number four bench plane and smoothly cuts those fibers. But the issue of the quality of the cut does lead to my biggest hurdle with the bottom feeder gouge, that is controlling the cut. A normal bowl gouge moves a lot like a pool cue. The movement is along the length of the tool and I find it very intuitive and easy to glide it along um, the desired path. Uh, the bottom feeder, because of its uh, shorter bevel, moves much more um, parallel to the length of the tool. And I find this, uh, I would say, much harder to, to control and to glide along a smooth arc. Consequently, my cuts are sometimes uneven and wobbly, which makes me go back to sanding anymore. But I've seen myself uh, progress skill-wise using this tool, so I'm excited to use it because of, of the high quality surface that we use. Let's go check out a few sample cuts. Here are the basics of how the bottom feeder works. I uh, just have a piece of pine on a screw chuck here. <clears throat> so to start with, I'll note that the, the feeder um, really cuts with only a small portion of the bevel or of the cutting edge right around, right around in there, um, a small portion. And it doesn't, I picture like a, a big roughing gouge, um, that's like a, a big spoon. It can remove a lot of material at once. Uh, this guy doesn't. If you look at the cutting edge on profile, you'll see if there isn't a lot of of blade or, or pointy bit sticking out. Um, so it's not gonna remove a lot of material at once. This is more of a finishing tool. Uh, so if you're doing lots of hogging um, deep down the bowl, just use a scraper. Um, and then come in with one of these for a higher quality finish couple of passes. So I've had this piece of pine and what I'm gonna do to show you how it works um, <clears throat> is first uh, take off these two little little domes, and then uh, I'll dish it out, pretending as if, as if it's a bowl. And along the way, I'm gonna demonstrate how to approach, uh, do an entry cut, if you will, um, into, onto a flat surface. When hollowing a bowl, uh, entry cuts are a big thing when coming in from the, the rim, and you might find yourself in situations where you want to do an entry cut with the bottom feeder, uh, making uh, cutting onto a surface, leaving a nice sharp corner. All right. Yeah, and before I begin, um, I'll add that when you first, uh, when you get your first gouge, 
um, figure it out with the lathe power off, um, just as you might uh, learn with the skew. So we'll start with the gouge touching the work. Um, the cutting edge is nowhere near the wood. Remember that this angle is, is like 60 degrees or so. So just spin your, spin your part and, and, and then turn the tool, um, uh, rotating the edge in until it starts making a cut. And you'll see that I'm holding, holding the, the flute straight up and down. Uh, there's, there's really no nuance to this tool. Just keep that flute pointing straight in the air. Easy does it. And yeah, so rotate the tool. Um, you can uh, <laughs> rather rotate the lathe by hand uh, and tilt the tool inwards and so, until you start getting the cut. And that's going to tell you uh, this is the engagement angle of the tool to the work. So no matter where you are in your bowl, this angle, try to memorize it, um, this is where you're going to be getting, will you be getting a nice cut. And as the, and do remember that given that the interior surface of a bowl is curved, um, you'll maintain the same engagement angle through the surface of the bowl. So not doing anything, I'm just rubbing, rubbing the bevel, and then I, I slowly turn in until I start getting the cut. There's one. All right. And notice I have the tool rest uh, adjusted so that um, the cutting, cutting point, that, that red spot, is right in the, the center of, of rotation. That's not so bad. I turn in, I start getting the cut. And keep it going. Not the cut, no cuts. I turn it in. There it is. Not bad. Now this is this is just two by four dimensional material uh, mounted in a cross grain grain orientation. I'm getting a pretty pretty smooth uh, cut down here. Good job, bottom feeder. Now I'm going to show you how to do uh, entry cuts to take off these two these two lips. Um, so I'll demonstrate what happens if you try to just go straight in. It's not great. So I'm not making any cut over here. And now as I'm touching this this first lip, um, the part that's touching is uh, the center. Oops, the part that's touching is either the center or the, even the right hand wing neither of which have bevel support against the work. So that's going to be either an un uncontrolled cut, which would be of low quality and hard to control, or it just might be a catch. Let's see. Ooh, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. No bueno. Yeah, so I, I engaged a lot of the cutting edge there all at once, and uh, it didn't like it. So to do an entry cut, uh, it's a little bit like with a, a normal um, bowl gouge and entering the rim. What I'm going to do is turn the flute 90 degrees, pointing, pointing towards the wall. And what I'm going to be looking for is this, the, the bottom, uh, be, bottom of the bevel at the 6 o'clock position on the gouge. And I'm going to be sighting down at that. I've, I've moved my camera to hopefully in, uh, show that. That <laughs> probably won't work very well. So I'm sighting down at the tool at, the, at that 6 o'clock line. And I'm keeping that line in parallel with the surface that I want to cut. So in this case, I'm just keeping that line uh, perpendicular to the lathe bed. And what I'm going to do is, is swing the gouge face around like, like, the, like the hands on a clock, um, keeping that, that 6 o'clock line parallel with my uh, desired cut face the whole time. And I'm just going to rotate and swing the, the gouge down slowly down into the cut. So I'm starting up here. Um, the bottom face of the bevel is parallel. I'm just going to rotate it through, making contact, and I'm in. And now, as I, and now you saw me um, rotate the gouge to the flute up position, and that's the normal, normal cut spot. And you'll develop a fluidity with that, that transition over time. But it's okay if it's a little herky-jerky at first. The, the, the important part is that you're making a safe, controlled entry cut uh, that's not going to cause your tool to skate one way or another and rest up your, mess up your work. So let's do a few more. So I'm going to start here. The bottom, the 6 o'clock position on the bevel is parallel. Rotate through. I'm in. And now I'm going to rotate the, the tool 
and continue with my cut. Good deal. Let's do this guy. Mm. Bit off a little more than the gouge is comfortable with there. All right, let's do an entry cut over here on the left hand side of the blank. So there's my parallel with that six o'clock position on the gouge. Rotate out, come in, lovely. All right, we have a nice, ooh, that's a nice crisp line right over there. So there's no, no, no torn grain. Uh, I didn't get any catches. That's just because I took a very slow um, rotating the entry cut into the work.